Hi everyone, welcome to part three. I didn't think it would take this many parts. <laughs> so we've just got these two parts to go through. I've got the Fujitsu Siemens moved over here for now. So, I'll get you in a slightly better position, hopefully. Oh, let's get cracking. I think I'm going to go for this pile first. So, <clears throat> if I can get this working, I wouldn't mind keeping this one because it's just an unusual Toshiba to me. Uh, Windows 2000 Professional. It's got some kind of a I don't know, security code or something in there, maybe. To Nice raised speakers, I do like that. But no touchpad for the mouse. It's got the little, uh, little nipple in the middle there. I quite like those though. Touchpads can annoy me. Just that curiosity on the charged. No, we are dead. I'm not going to put that on the Toshiba pile because it's quite a small one. So I'll put that on there last. Right. I think I'm seeing double here, because I'm sure there's another Acer identical there. I'm going to check the model numbers in a minute. This looks like it's got a XP COA on it. It's got two COAs on it. Trigem Computer Inc, this one. And this one looks like the newer, a newer one. So, does this actually say what Acer it is under here? It's got crystal eye camera. Webcam optimised. Microsoft Windows XP. The Travelmate 7520. So, here's the other one. Is this one the same or is this one, ouch, different? No, they are identical, both 7520s. Amazing how big some of these laptops were back then. And that's quite wide, isn't it? There's quite a bit of weight in these as well. Right, so I've got two of those. Oh, look! Another one of these Dells. Ah, now this one is slightly different to the others. I've had one of these before and it didn't work. It was a dead one. Well, it's an Inspiron 8500, so hopefully I can get this one to work. No, I don't think we're going to get lucky with uh, finding any more with charge in the battery. Um, my pile of Dells is a bit... Yeah. Bit weird. Oh, I looked at the other one. The other one I got is a CPX, not a CPI, so they are slightly different. What the differences are exactly, I have no idea. All I know is my other one is a Latitude CPX. That next is quite small. And we have yet another Dell. Got a few but several buttons missing on the keyboard actually. Is that an XP? Yeah, XP Professional. Got one of these minus the um, DVD ROM drive. It is indeed. In fact, that keyboard is not looking healthy. So, this is, yeah, this is another D400. Oh, maybe I can make a good D400 out of the umpteen that I've got in this pile. Well, we got another Fujitsu Siemens. Yep. Looks like on the inside. Ooh. I like the white keyboards with the black surround. Don't know why. That just... I'm sure that is upside down. 
because I'm sure on other keyboards that arrow right there should not be pointing down. I want another laptop now. <laughs> Just to have a look. I'm not going ga ga. Uh, no, that is the shift key and it is upside down. And in the wrong place, I think. Let's have another double check of that. Is that in the wrong place? No, that's shift keys. What's this one? Oh, that's the caps lock key. Well, I've never known a caps lock key to be an hour. It's uh, strange. You want to charge in it? No, we're dead. We did! Right. That might be a problem because my Fujitsu Siemens are on the slope. <laughs> I'll put that there, I think. Right, we've got some IBM ThinkPads next. say so definite keepers but they actually smell a bit burnt out to be honest well this one does hopefully that's nothing all right that's the PCIe thingy slot hard drive slot there's only XP era machines but that's what I was looking for cool look at that IBM goodness that is really clean in there. What is it? It's a ThinkPad. It's a T43. Now I've looked for these on eBay. You don't find these IBMs that often. Is this one another? No, this one feels complete. This one feels thicker. And one thing I did hate about IBMs is that they covered their laptops in that horrible rubbery sort of stuff. Oh, hello, we've got a thingy there. So this is a T30 and I think that's what this one is as well. And I think I've got a fourth IBM somewhere. Ah. So it looks like these three may have been bought as a job lot according to this. Three times IBM ThinkPad laptop job lots for spares or repairs. Winning bid £15.26 on the 6th of October 2012. I've even worked it out to £5.09 each. <laughs> that laptop was just determined to fall over regardless, wasn't it? Because you saw that, we didn't touch it. I didn't touch it, you didn't touch it, no one touched it. And it still fell over and popped open. It, it, it was just determined at £15 for the shipping. And they've even marked it as £5 each there. Right, is there a seller description here? Ah. So it looks like there's two 600Es that was with this. That one's not a 600E and this is the T30 which is actually got highlighted on this um, paperwork. Missing parts nothing apparently. Problem unknown untested screen present but broken bleeding couple of screws are missing. Rightly, hard drives are under this bit here, somewhere, I think. And this screw thing there, that seems to be broken. No, I can't get this cover off, I can't remember, I have to play with that later. Ooh. It's getting late now and I'm getting tired. I had planned to um, start testing these, but I'm not doing that tonight, I don't think. Right, so we've got is this another T30? No, this one opens up differently again. It's got the two tabs on the side. 
So is this the uh, 600? Then it is the 600A. Ha! Ah. Ooh, Pentium 2! I've got an IBM. Now I'm pretty certain it's not 600 either. So according to that, there should be another 600E somewhere. Should. N ah, it's there. There it is. What's next? Oh, another one of these Packard bells. I've actually put the other one of these up there as it does work. It's up on the uh, PCs. Yeah, it looks absolutely identical. Hang on a minute. Oh, this one's not charged. <laughs> it's got two buttons missing. Other than that, it seems to be in the same condition as the other one. Oh, the other one might be in a bit better condition. Well, I don't own any Packard Bell laptops, so I definitely want to keep one of these. Just slide that over there. Alright then, next up, we have an Ergo. Ergo Ensys S. I believe I have got at least one Ergo. Just another uh, cheap little Windows XP thing, really. There's nothing special about it. Hang on. You can barely see that that's better. So, uh, there's a lot of these laptops I've got a Celeron M in. Uh, Ergo can go in the uh, weird and wonderful pile. Okay, so I've got an older Acer here. Definitely Windows XP era ish. Am I correct? Yep. Windows XP Home Edition. Seemed to be quite a popular version of XP for laptops. I see a lot of those COAs on laptops. Little floppy disk drive on the side there. DVD-ROM drive on the front there with a compact disk rewrite. Bit... Okay. Oh, this one's got a Pentium 4. It just says B missing. I don't know what that means. And turn off DVD when in. Does that mean it turns off when the DVD is plugged in? You know, because it's got a detachable drive, so it could be an issue. My guess would be, if that's the case, it's going to be an issue with either the actual tray or this little circuit on the back here, like a little short or something. If that's what that note means. I'm presuming that's what it means. I'll find out when I test it. We charged. No, but let's take it out again to see if it does. You never know. No, we are dead. Never mind. On the pile of aces. I bet you can't guess what this one is. You could probably see it from the symbol on the top, actually. It's a Fujitsu, Fujitsu Siemens. I've never had so many Fujitsu Siemens. I've never seen so many. Right, so what we got? Windows Vista Basic, a seller on inside. No charge, but a very wonky looking um, power button there. It's sunk on this corner. Screen got through. It's not in too bad shape, to be honest. Lids always get marked anyway, so I've just come to expect that, to be honest. Yeah, that's not bad. What's this one? We've got a big E on the lid, so is this an E machines? Tell Celeron right there. Yeah, it is an e-machines. Nope, no life. It's quite nice though. Windows XP Home Edition on it. There is some laptops I'm going to get rid of. That's uh, in my cupboard of keeping laptops. 
I'm sure in the other room I've already got another, yeah I have, I've got another one of these compacts. So I've got two of these now. But that to me looks nice. I do like that look. No, we're not charged. Aww. Where was I putting my compacts? I can't remember. But I'm sure there's another compact somewhere. Oh well, now that can go in the odd pile. Right, one more in this pile. It's another Acer. Quite a number of Acers here, isn't there? It's got, well, what's left of an XP thing on there. No charge. And I can tell from the keys this has actually had a fair bit of use. I think someone did quite a lot of typing on this one because the enter spacebar, most of the letter keys, apart from Z, X and Q, <laughs> have all got, you know, the finger mark wear marks on them. Every other button is sort of old and dirty over time, but these have got the clean spots on. Maybe this was used as like a, uh, a business laptop or something. Right. One more pile. I'm just going to shift position a little bit. I'm so glad this tripod doesn't squeak. <laughs> right, so we've got an old advent here. I've actually noticed there's not many advents in this job lot. 14.1 inch TFT monitor. 256 megabytes of DDR RAM, integrated graphics, blah blah blah, 40 gigabyte hard drive. Some of them, they tend to just rip them out. Now, this is an old Sony Vio, and I wouldn't mind keeping this for my collection because I don't have any Sony laptops, and every one I've come across today has been faulty. I've got a faulty one. Well, it isn't faulty. It does work, but it needs a lot of parts, and it's over there, and I've had that for ages. Uh, Windows XP Home. Yeah, I wouldn't mind... Uh... Oh. <laughs> wouldn't mind having one that works, but uh, this one might be a bu bugger to test, because uh, we haven't got the uh, panel to go in there. <laughs> For the power button, we've just got a cable. Well, damn, is what I'm going to say to that. That ain't fair. What have we got next? <laughs> Another Acer. The Acer pile is getting quite big. <clears throat> See, just another old XP. A lot of these are just old XPs. Find a couple that are a little bit older. Like the 600 IBMs. We've got Troublemate 250. But a lot of these look in such good condition, like they've hardly been used. You know, it's like, what do people do? Just buy them, use them a couple of times, and then store them? Is that what they've done? I'm not even gonna. <laughs> I could see that sliding off there. So here's the other IBM. Which is actually different to that one. This looks like the same as the other ones. It's, T, it's a T60. Got infrared under the bottom there. Which you can turn on and off with a switch there. Do we have power? Yeah. Intel Centrino Duo. Powered by GNU slash Linux. Well, would have been quite a high class XP then, because it's got a Windows XP sticker on there. Um, we've still got the screw in the hard drive thing. Ooh. Does that mean this one's still got the hard drive? 
So according to that thing, we've got an M600 or 600M or whatever it was missing. These two look almost identical, but I don't know if they are. Not yet. I've got another one of these old compacts. I think I've already got... I've got one that works. If it's the same model as this Evo. I believe it is. And... I've got another one in the other room, which I think is the one that has a red screen. RAM should be underneath this panel here. Can't get off without a prizey stick. And for some reason, a lot of these compacts that I've got from this haul have got the battery missing. And it's been mostly the compacts, and I don't know why. Oh! And I could possibly... It is possibly have another one of these HPs in my... Um, collection in the kitchen cupboard. Compact NX9020, I'll have to check the model number, but it looks the same. No, nope. it's dead, Jim. Where's an HP? I don't know if I've got a pile for HPs, have I? I'll just stick it over here for now. What's this one? Ooh, an old Toshiba. Toshiba! I have to admit, I do have a bit of a soft spot for Toshiba machines. Well, a little catch there for the screen catch is missing. And that's a bit floppy. It's like a bigger version of that one I showed you earlier, because it's got the raised speakers there, which I like. Toshiba Satellite. Designed for Microsoft Windows XP. Emails awake. We don't have any RAM. So I'm going to have to put some RAM in. The model, it's a Toshiba Satellite S1410-801 with a very long model number. But why is it older Toshiba's always had 15 volts? That's exactly what this one is. And it just so happens I do have a couple of proper Toshiba 15 volt adapters, so that one won't be a problem. Power up. Ow. Oh good, here's another one. That just says same problem, yeah, same problem as what? Battery missing. Pretty certain we've got a couple of uh, Fujitsu's like this and Oh, okay. We have no RAM in this one. <laughs> I guess all the screws are missing from that. We've got no hard drive either. We do have the Wi-Fi card and processor. So I suppose the only thing I can do is a Windows Vista sticker on here. The only thing I can do is basically put some RAM in, plug it in and see what it does or doesn't do. Here's another Amilo going to press the on button to see if it did anything. Of course it's not going to do anything. It hasn't got a bloody battery in that, has it? Right. Here's another big one. And I got one of these in the last haul as well that I got last week. The first part of this haul. And it, do, it looks the same, but again, model numbers could be different. So i just have to... It's actually opening the same way as well. But again, whichever one I think is the best one to keep, I'll keep it. But to be honest, I don't think it's going to matter because this looks exactly in the same sort of condition as the other one. Alright, what's next? A gateway. I haven't got a gateway desktop. I haven't got a gateway laptop either, so... Designed for Windows XP, Windows Vista compatible, Celeron M, if this is not a dual core processor then I won't be upgrading it to Vista or anything. But it does seem to be complete. 
And I know there's not going to be a hard drive in it because there's one screw missing. But all the screws are here for the RAM cover. So there's a chance there could be RAM in there. Could. Now, so far I only got lucky with that one that turned on. I still can't believe I had charge in it. Well, hang on, I've got another one of these uh, high grades. All the screws are missing apart from one from the RAM cover. So I'm not going to keep my hopes up that there's RAM in there. Is this the battery? I think this is the battery. Yeah. So... RAM and hard drive must be under there. What are we like under... And what sticker have we got? Vista? Yeah, Vista Home Basic. Oh dear, one button broken here for the mouse. No juice in the battery. And apart from the broken button, this doesn't seem to be... Well, actually it looks like it's got... I don't know, I thought that was paint splatter, but that's just dirt. Definitely keep one high grade. Maybe I can make a good one out of the two. Oh, and we've got another compact. Now this one, it's got Windows 2000 Professional on it. But this says M7, M700, M5 or E500. But this is nothing like the two other E500s I've got. This is different. The catch is actually completely different. No, no charge in the battery. So. That kind of puzzles me. I know my other two are E500s, because I've got 2001 and 98 on the other, as per COAs. Right. Oh. E-System. Now, I got one of these with the other, with the first lot, I should say. And that's actually working on Windows 10. And this one does not have a screen. We've got some screws missing from the RAM cover. Not many, though. Just a couple. So, this might work. It might not. But I have to say, the cosmetic condition of this one is a lot worse than my other one. So that one might just be a spares machine anyway. So if you wonder why I buy job lots like this, I just find it's easier to add to my collection. And parts bin. And then anything I don't need parts from, I can just, I don't know, stick on eBay or something and perhaps get a tenner for it. <laughs> you know, get a small portion of my money back. Another one with the battery missing. This is an Acer, isn't it? I've learnt that one up in the wrong place. That's a Fuji. It looks like a Vista sticker. Why do the... Yeah, it is. But why do Windows Vista stickers fade so much? Centrino Duo on this one. Uh, Intel Core 2 Duo Processor T5500. 1.6 GHz. 2 MB cache. 15.4 inch screen. 160 gigabyte hard drive, gigabyte of DDR2 RAM. And why is it a lot of Vista laptops only came with a gigabyte of RAM? Something else I've noticed that's um, common with a lot of Windows Vista laptops. Right, the final laptop, which is actually quite a nice looking uh, Fujitsu Siemens, with a Windows XP Home Edition sticker. A lot of dust on there, so this hasn't been opened for a while. It's quite clean. It's got a Milo written on there. I don't know if it's like the other Fujitsu's that I've uh, picked up. It actually looks like it, you know. What Milo number is this one? Or a Milo? I still don't know how you pronounce that. 
It's an L1300. So, I'm curious now. No, this one is actually a different model. You can see that. There's a possibility I might have some more L1300s in there. I might as well move these. Not one go because they're bloody heavy. Heavy on buggers. That one's not quite the same width as the others. What was that one? That's a wide one. See, we might stack a bit better if I put the wide ones on first. I think I'm seeing things because this one's not exactly the same either. Oh well. Oh shit. Come here. Oh. Hopefully I can get some of these working and decide what I want to get. Well, I've already decided on some of the ones I want to keep. I quite like this life book. I want to get this one working. See, it's got Core 2 GI processor in it as well, so... Yeah. I want that one working. I'm going to put this one on top, because it's probably going to be the first one I play with. There you go. Stacking aces up on there, what pillock? I don't want to stack the aces on there, do I? I've got to stretch my knee. Ow! That's good. So, after all that, I still do not know how many laptops are here. A lot, basically. What am I going to play with tomorrow? I don't know, but I think the first thing to do would be just to go through all of these. I've got power outlet up there. Let's get some adapters and some memory sticks, and because uh, I'm not going to guarantee all of these as I've got RAM installed, and just see what actually posts and what doesn't, and then sort them into two piles from there. I think that'll be my first job after breakfast, actually. And then once I've done that, I can move on to the desktops and see what's going to post out of those. They've all got motherboards in. It looks like they've all got the processors in, but again, I doubt they've got RAM in. That seems to be the one thing that get taken. Uh, RAM and the hard drives. But, uh, as I've said before, I believe the hard drives is for data protection. Never mind, there is other ways to get these old laptops working, I mean, I can go out and buy cheap uh, SSDs and throw in these, if I really wanted to. Well, at least the uh, models that have SATA connectors for hard drives. That's got a few bits missing. Right, that was part three, so, thank you for watching. I suppose the next series of videos will be, um, actually I'll tell you what, I'll do a video going through the desktops because there's not many there. Um, but again, if I was going to do a video testing all these laptops, it's going to be a long video. Most likely have to split it into at least three parts like I've done for the laptops. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.